Hello and welcome to this download from Blackwell Online. My name is George Miller, and my guest today is editor of Wired magazine, Chris Anderson. Chris's first book, The Long Tail, showed how the internet was beginning to change our economic models. Instead of bricks and mortar stores with limited stocks of best selling items, the internet laid on an almost limitless banquet of availability. In his new book, Free The Future of a Radical Price, he goes further and examines how free is becoming the new default price. For lots of transactions on the internet. Chris's book looks at what new business models are emerging to cope with this unprecedented change in consumer expectation. I put it to him that free was a radical price because of this power to disrupt the tried and tested marketing models of the 20th century. It, it is, you know, free is the, is the strange combination of being a word that's totally familiar and also totally changing. It's, it's both sort of well understood and completely confused. It's changed its meaning um, from the 20th century to the 21st in ways we're only starting to appreciate. And, it, and it, it's always had multiple meanings. And we have a kind of a love-hate relationship, uh, or more, more to the point, in the sort of attraction-fear relationship with free. And so in, in, a, in a strange way, what started off as an economics book became almost a semantics book about the changing meaning of a word. I mean, you talk about the suspicion that many people of an older generation have, but also the excitement that free can generate. Mm. But really, the, the movement that you're describing is one towards the expectation that free is just part of the deal. Yeah. So, the, so the, you know, the, the, I, I draw a distinction in my 20th, 21st century divide between the world of atoms and the world of bits. The world of atoms is the world that we, we live in. It's the world of stuff and manufacturing. And, and the world of the 20th century, it's one where free had to be a gimmick. I mean, you could not make things free because they had real costs. So free gift inside is not really free. Buy one, get one free is not really free. Razors and blades are still something you're paying for. And then you move to the world of bits where the where the costs of the bits are essentially zero, close enough to zero to round down. And then everything sort of defaults to free. And so you end up with this, these sort of the children of the Adam's age and the children of the bits age. My children are children of the bits age. And they go online and they completely assume that everything's going to be free. It never occurs to them that they should pay for things. Now, that's not to say that eventually a, you know, a request for a credit card doesn't emerge and they understand that as well. But typically they just then go looking for the free alternative and they, because they know there will be one. So the thesis of the book is not that everything is going to be free, but simply that free is part of the, the whole way that economics and business are going to be conducted from now on. Exactly. I mean, I think that free of the 20th century was a bit of a hoax. Um, and, you know, and our, our, our suspicion of free, there's no such thing as a free lunch, etc., derives from that recognition that sooner or later you're going to pay. Um, the free of the 21st century is, is, is not a hoax. Google doesn't show up in your credit card, by and large. You know, and, and, and as a result, free becomes, you know, a default price. Um, you know, whatever you do online, you're either going to be using free or competing with free. Free is going to be one of the prices in the marketplace. And the question is, you know, this raises all sorts of dilemmas. How do you compete with free? How do you make money from free? You know, how can you possibly build a business where the default price is zero? And, you know, many companies have answered that really well. I mean, Google obviously is the most, is the most obvious of them. And the book is, is really about solving this paradox, the notion that most people can get products and services for free, and yet you can build billion-dollar industries around that. Mm. Inevitably, it's going to be a world in which there will be winners and losers. And I mean, it seems to me that some giant corporations are going to find it difficult to change the business model without a lot of casualties. And you talk about professions like real estate agents, travel agents, mm -hmm. where th their work is going to be done more and more by computers. And I guess not everybody can move upstream. Well, you know, that, is, that always happens you know, in, in disruptive times. And this is true in the Industrial Revolution, and it's true now. Some people adapt and some and some don't and there are definitely losers um, you know there's, there's losses along the way to use your the two examples um, you know 10 years ago my my travel agent stockbroker and tax accountants were all people and now they're all software and they're all free what happened to my tax accountants stockbrokers and and, uh, and and travel agents well the travel agents many of them did in fact get, leave the business my stockbroker some of them left the business some of them moved up to become you know sort of wealth consultants or whatever whatever we call it these days the tax accountants by and large you know moved up to do more interesting challenging tax now what that means is that actually sometimes my taxes are relatively challenging and i return to a human being and that human being is is um possibly cheaper than they might have been otherwise 
more available than they would have been otherwise. But so there is there is clearly an upstream in that in that domain. But you're starting to see this across the board. If something can be turned into software, it will be turned into software because once it's software, it becomes free. Looking at the book publishing business, you say the book industry is not in a state of collapse. But when you look at what has happened to the music business and you look at the challenges facing the movie business, one has to sort of look ahead and, you know, I mean, your, your paradigm is that bits want to be free and yeah. books are becoming bits. So what is your, what's your prognosis for the book industry? You know, to, to, to abstract it a little bit, um, you, know, you, can, you know, atoms have a place where they do something that bits cannot. So with the CD, the Adams form of the the Adams form of the music was the silver disc, and it turns out the silver disc was what we, in jargony phrase terms, call a value subtract medium, which is to say, it's not what you want. I mean, what you wanted was the music, and you wanted the music, um, you know, the tracks you wanted, and you wanted already an MP3 form, and a CD was more tracks than you wanted, a higher price you wanted to pay, you know, in a form that you had to rip and put onto your iPod. So the CD didn't add any value, and as a result, when the bits form became available. And because it could be transmitted for, you know, could be made available at zero, which the pirates very quickly recognized, you know, the, the marketplace ran from the CD and towards the towards the MP3. A book, I would argue, those atoms still add value, and that is that is, you know, what do I mean by that? Um, today, when I look at the book in front of me, free, it is it is, um, you know, what do I see? I see portability. I see, you know, I see high resolution printing. I see a shiny cover. It look, looks like it would be pretty attractive on my bookshelf. I could give it as a gift. It's very easy to see how far I am into it. I can make notes. I can dog ear the pages. I happen to consider that the superior form of the book. And if I, if I love a book, I'm going to want the hardcover. Now, that's not true for everybody. Some people are very happy to have the, you know, the Kindle version or uh, other ebooks. And over time, as more people get devices that can read ebooks, I suspect you'll see a, a division of the market between the two. But as long as some people consider the hardcover, the premium form, they will, they'll be willing to pay for it. Mm. 